Hello everybody and welcome to Shane and Stuff. Today I'm going to teach you how to play Grimslingers with the Northern Territory expansion. If you've seen my other videos, I have two of them. One for duels and one for the campaign mode, tall tale mode, story mode, whatever you want to call it. And when I made those videos, I was doing those according to the third edition rules that were in the process of being made. And so the Northern Territory comes with this uh, new rule book which I think is technically the fourth edition of the rules. And so there's some changes, but not a whole lot. So my previous videos are still pretty valid. So I'm just gonna go over real quick the differences, and then I will put those in the description for you to reference later. So the first difference is in, in dual mode is uh, there's a hand limit in dual mode of eight and your stash is unlimited. And as I stand off action now, you can swap things between your hand and stash. In the dual setup now, everyone gets one signature spell instead of two. So you deal three to each person and they all pick one and put the rest back in the signature spell deck. Everyone can now take two standoff actions. This is pretty awesome and I'm sure makes gameplay much more exciting, maybe even faster. Archetypes have been replaced by the Grimslinger special resources and skills. So instead of the archetype action, it is now a Grimslinger specific standoff action. So you're going to get uh, Grimslingers now that have specific skills and some of them are going to be uh, for standoff phase. So basically in the standoff now, um, you might have a specific skill that you're going to use. There is now no more plus one envy if your element is strong against your opponent. So when I made the rules, if you were in a duel and you know you played ice, and ice beats wind, so if the other player had played wind, that if your target had played wind, then you would get a plus one envy uh, on that card. However, now there's no more plus one envy. Also, before your strong spell wouldn't cancel the other person's spell unless they were targeting you. So if you'd targeted somebody with ice and they played wind, you would get plus one envy. But if they targeted somebody else, their spell would still be would work as long as their spell wasn't weak to what that person played. But now basically anytime a strong spell is played against a weak spell, it immediately cancels that other spell and it's just discarded. So I could be targeting you with a strong spell, you could be targeting someone else, but if I've already hit you with my strong spell, yours is gone. But if you went before me, you would be able to get your spell off uh, before I canceled yours, as long as your target wasn't strong to you. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. It's kind of a little easier way to balance, and uh, I'm sure the duels are much faster. I haven't played duel mode with the changes yet. That's it for duels. So the difference is now between the campaign. Of course, as you can see, um, I've got this the fate deck dealt out here to form the area of, of Valley Haven. So in the area booklet, here's the area layout for Valley Haven. So instead of the old static map that you had, which was kind of, which worked well, you know, you could pick some different routes between certain locations you had to go to, whether you want to go through attack nodes or events or whatever, or rest nodes. Uh, this is now no longer used, and so if you're doing the old campaign or if you're in the Valley Haven area, this is how you're going to set it up. I'll go more into detail how that works later. So now in campaign mode, if you encounter a creature, you're only going to use creature modifiers if you encounter them on an attack node. Uh, any other way that you encounter them through events or story, it needs to specify whether you apply any modifiers. But there are now creature dispositions, and so these are a little different. I'll go over those later. So not really a change, but there are now actually three more general creature cards. So before you would always take the three, that there were only three general creature cards, skill cards, and you would put those in with the three skill cards of the creature that you're fighting, and that would form that creature's skills deck. But now you have six general creature skill cards, so you would randomly pull three of those, add them to the creature, and that would be their skill deck. So that adds a little bit of uh, new stuff and unknown when you form the creature skill deck, because before you knew you would get those three general skills, you knew what they were, you could try to maybe plan for those and work around the actual creature's skills. And another difference in the campaign mode, or uh, it's now kind of adventure mode, is you get two standoff actions just like in dual mode. So you also have the organizing hand and stash as a standoff action. And the old part about after you organize your hand and stash, uh, about still being able to do a standoff card or archetype ability, that's now void. So you basically just have a list of things you can do in your standoff phase, and one of those is organize hand and stash, and you can do two. And another thing you could do now in campaign mode is trade items if you're playing co-op. I've only played the campaign solo, but I'm sure that's mighty useful when you're playing co-op. So everything the rest is the same. So now on to the good stuff, AKA the new stuff. Okay, so one of the things you'll get in uh, Northern Territory expansion is you'll get some of these uh, player cards or reference cards. Uh, uh, so this is the one for creature duels. I like still using this one. So I put this here. And so this is, you can track your the EP and HP of the creature. When you're going to uh, encounter a creature, 
you're going to put their portrait here. You're going to put the modifier here if you if you're using one, and you're going to always do two dispositions, and then you're going to form their skill deck, and you can put it down here. I've got everything kind of bunched up a little bit to fit in the, the uh, shot here, but you're going to put their their skills here. And then as you use them, they're going to go here in the discard pile, of, or if there are deactivated ones, you put them over here. So I kind of like that for organizing the creature duel. Um, however, the player card um, it's kind of kind of big, and it kind of spreads out the Grimslinger a bit too much for my taste, but it's a great reference. So it's got everything you can do in the standoff phase. It goes through the draw phases if you're playing a duel. Uh, so you basically go step two if you're playing campaign mode against a creature, and you just go through all this. It's a great, great reference. Um, but if you want to, you would put it here. You would put your HP tracker over here, your EP and your special skill trackers over here. You've got space for your stash, your discard pile, de deactivate pile, and then you've got your passive space up here. There's a lot more passive items in the expansion, so a lot of the legendary items, which is another new thing in the expansion, oh, these are pretty much, I think, all passive, or no, there's passive, so there's a single target, it's a weapon. Some of these are armor or abilities you can trigger. Uh, some of them might be stay in your hand, others will go out into your passive space. Uh, you can only have one legendary item I believe at a time, or at least only one in your passive space at a time. Um, but these are these are pretty awesome things. I, when I was playing through, I had the magic shield. Uh, <laughs> it's only capable of taking one good hit, so it could be used at any time during a duel. And once per duel, you can completely ignore the effects of any one card. So I had this paired with my Nunyo skill of hammer time, which basically I fill up the chamber of my gun, fill up bullets pulling from my uh, belt, and then I could just unleash however many bullets I have by playing this card, and I would always get up to six and then just, boom, uh, hit the creature for six damage. And that coupled with this, I could cancel the creature's card if it's going to either like make my turn null and I really need to use that, have that turn, or if they're going to hit me and kill me or something. This was this got me through the first two chapters of the campaign uh, along with my hammer time skill without almost taking a dent. <laughs> it was awesome. But I also had a lot of good luck in my... Uh, uh, anytime I had to use the DNC deck, you know, the, uh, the, the number deck. I, I drew lots of fives. I, 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 I manipulated a little bit with some other skills. It was, it was, it was awesome. So in addition to those two cards, you would you also have a, car, uh, a card for the other decks. So you could put the item deck here, the discard pile, legendary item deck here, and then this is good if you're playing duels because you could have the scavenge field here, but there is no scavenge field in a campaign. And then you could put your signature spells, miscellaneous items, and then the fate deck and the number deck here. But I kind of just like this layout. I've got my item deck here. I discard them uh, next to it. I've got my signature spells right underneath it. I've got my other skill cards that I haven't added to my character over here, and I've got all of the all of the creatures around the outside. I've got the extra cards I may need during the campaign over there, the DNC deck over there, and that's it. Another awesome thing um, that I got, I think it was a Kickstarter exclusive, but you can buy it. I think it's like ten bucks in the Green Bar Game Store. But this is the first player token that replaces the little red meeple from the core game, and it's just gorgeous and awesome. So when you start a campaign, you use that for where you are. So uh, if I had just set up Valley Haven, I would go right there. I'm sorry, Valley of Death. I think I was calling it Valley Haven earlier too. So if I set up Valley of Death, I would start at the Valley Haven location, which is that King of Hearts over there. So now that I've given you kind of a quick overview of some of the new stuff, let me go through other differences. So now also in a duels mode, you're basically going to be using the Grimslingers that now have special abilities. You could, of course, probably still go with just the portraits without the abilities, but it's recommended uh, to use the, the Grimslingers with their abilities. So four of the core game Grimslingers now have special abilities. So one of them is Nunyo, which you see here. Nunyo's got his uh, weapon called the Grave Maker here. So, uh, you always, so you start Nunyo out with 10 bullets in your ammo belt and zero in your chamber. And then uh, if you're either in a duel with, or you're in a creature, duel. Every standoff phase you can add two bullets from your ammo belt. So basically I would reduce my ammo belt by two and 
increase my chamber by two. And in a player versus player duel, the ammo belt is, has 10 bullets and that's it for the whole duel. But in a campaign, it starts at 10, and as you use it during a duel, the way to get ammo back is at any time if Nyonyo is going to receive an item, instead, Nyonyo can receive three bullets in the ammo belt. So then Nyonyo's special skills um, use the Grave Maker. So like I showed you, I had Hammer Time equipped during my campaign mode, and uh, you know I could have bought other skills, but I hadn't. Um, Felt like I needed to. I was upping my my health, my EP, my hand size because you start with a very low hand size. But you know, nyonyo has got all these other skills that uh, I can get with progress points. So progress points is another new thing for the campaign, and it's so cool. So when you start a campaign, you pick your you pick your Grimslinger, and you're going to start with uh, five HP and five EP. You're going to start with a hand size of five, max stash size of three, and the passive space size of one. If you ever get more cards than what you have room for, you'll just immediately have to deactivate some of them. But you start your character with your six elemental spells, that's basically it. So then you also start with 20 progress points that you can spend. So you're gonna put 20 here and zero spent, and then you can go through and look at all of the things you can get with prog progress points. So you can buy signature spells for eight, you can get higher health, for four, you can up your energy points for four, you can up your hand size for four, stash, passive space, Nunyo's skills, and of course these are the other Grimslinger skills if you are playing as those Grimslingers. There's some notes, space on the back, there's a whole pad of these, each of these, so this is your progress points and this is your achievement tracker, so as you play the campaign you're gonna do gain certain achieve, achievements like completing chapters, um, completing certain tasks in the locations in the Valley of Death, or the other areas you might explore. Defeating creatures, resolving events in certain ways, getting specific items, and everything. So as you gain progress points, you add them to your total that you have, and then you keep track of how many you've spent when you upgrade things. So it's a pretty fun pencil and paper progress tracker. And so you can see, uh, I got through the first two chapters, I've got a hand size of eight now, max EP of seven, max HP of six, I've got the Siphon and Evert spells, which I started with. This Siphon spell is amazing. That also helped me a lot. And uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, where I'm at right now. I got through chapter two. I fought the Witch King. Uh, it was insane. Um, and then I started chapter three and went about three spaces, encountered a uh, specter and promptly died. <laughs> so I'm gonna restart at chapter three, but I can tell you right now, I am enjoying this game even more. I liked it a lot before, but I'm enjoying it even more with the changes, this whole way of setting out the area map, which randomizes the paths between locations. So the way you would do that now is you would look at the area booklet and you go to the area that you're gonna be exploring and so this is the Valley of Death area. So then I'm going to form the face down cards. So uh, everything in those face down cards c consists of two queens, a jack, all four aces, 11 random black numbers and 10 random red numbers. And then I've got the face up area tiles, which are listed here, King of Hearts, Red Portal, you know, King of Diamonds, these specific face up ones, which are already face up. So those are certain locations where on the old map, you know, you had the Lone Titan, Lama Lama Sip Sip, Al's Magic Market, where you already knew where those were going. So they're here, but now as you go to them, you're not sure what you're going to run into. You have a specific modifiers in the creature deck, specific events, and then this is just, uh, if you hit an attack node, you roll just like before, and that's what goes with this area. So if you end up doing a different area, so if you're in the Red River, you would set up the area to look like this, and you would compose the decks by consulting this list, and then see now the attack roll includes a wisp. So that's one of the new creatures. So as you go deeper into the new areas, you're going to encounter some of the new creatures, but also, even when I was playing the Valley of Death campaign, uh, I did encounter some of the new creatures through events. So after I formed those face down cards, then I shuffle them up and I lay out the area like this, put the face up stuff in between. So now in a campaign, there's uh, the phases are a little bit different. So before you had, you would check your prerequisites on the story you're, you're doing, and then you would resolve the node you're on, uh, and then you would uh, move, essentially. So, But now you start with movement phase, and then, then you do the narrative, check your prerequisites, then you resolve the tile you're on, and then you have a rest phase. So the rest phase, instead of having rest nodes, you have a rest phase. So in the rest phase, you can 
basically have a whole standoff phase. So any of the standoff options that you would have during a duel, you also have at the end of every turn. So that's it. So you just, you know, move, resolve if there's narrative to resolve, resolve the tile, and then do a rest phase. So when you move now, what you do is you pick which direction you're going, you flip over the card, and then you move on to it. So this is a Jack of Spades. It's actually a special event. That's kind of crazy. I totally randomized this. That happens to be Hank the Hunter. So I would basically go into the book, find Hank the Hunter, and see what I do with that. So resolve, Hank the Hunter, rest. Now if Hank the Hunter was needed for the narrative, I would go through that. But your first move's probably not needed for the narrative yet. So I resolve, Hank the Hunter, go to rest phase, and then I'm back to movement phase. So maybe I want to go this way. And so that's a black space. All the black cards, they're just nothing. So you can still have your rest phase. And actually, I think during chapter two, I actually had to be on a black card to, to resolve the next part after I gathered six uh, ritual items. Um, but So they could be requirements for a story, but generally they're just nothing. So then I can move again. Or if I want to do a standoff phase, I can do that for my rest. So I move here. Now, that's a red card. A red card is an, is an event. So then I would just draw an event card and do that just like we did in the old, in the core game. So also in here are, are the four aces. The aces are the attack nodes. Um, so if you, if you flip over an ace, move on to it, you're going to resolve in a, a creature duel. So you're going to do an attack roll, see which creature that is according to the area, and duel the creature. So other things that you have also in the Northern Territory is in the area book that you have bounties. So bounties um, have specific requirements. So like this one is you must be on an, a spot adjacent to the Llama Llama Sip Sip area tile, which on the back it's got a nice reference here. So Llama Llama Sip Sip is the king of clubs, which is way over there. So if I'm in any of those spots adjacent to it, I could I could try to do this bounty. So it tells you how to do the bounty and what you get as a reward. And then of course you've the achievements. If you do any bounties, you also get progress points for doing the bounties and all that kind of good stuff. So with the expansion, you have a whole new campaign you can do called the Child of Light. And you could basically go right into this um, after setting everything up and start from scratch in here. Or you could replay the Valley of Death campaign uh, starting with, you know, and building your character up before you go into the Child of Light, but it'll work either way. However, using the booklet, there's some of the differences between the core game and the expansion are not really handled well in the old uh, story booklet. You could, I'm sure you could figure it out and make it happen. Uh, Stephen Gibson has actually said it does, it can work. It might be a little weird. You'll just have to figure out how to, how to handle certain things, but he has redone the whole Valley of Death campaign for the expansion and so he's made some changes to some of the fights um, he's kind of updated the story a little bit in certain areas but the best way to do that is to actually use the Grimslinger's companion app I believe that there's going to be a PDF um, version of the updated campaign I don't think it's out there yet it's gonna be on the Greenbrier games site I will be linking you to um, their page that has a whole bunch of errata because uh, Truth be told, sadly, this new rule booklet had a lot of mistakes in it. Some of them are just straight up numbers or, or off. Um, some of them the rule is wrong. Um, so it's really unfortunate, but Steven has been working really hard getting that all fixed. So there's an errata page at the Greenbrier Games website. Uh, there's a the latest version of the rule book with all the corrections in a PDF form. So, but the awesome thing that Steven has been doing is he has created an app for Grimslingers. And so everything in the app is going to be correct. So in the app, you have a lot of resources. So you can use this Tall Tale Resolver to kind of uh, go through turns. It'll also set you up with a virtual version of the map if you want to. So you can save space or time if you want to just use the virtual version of the map, but it also take you through the turns of uh, the stories and everything. Currently, I believe the campaign is the only thing uh, in the app. So Steven is working on getting the new campaign into the app as well as a third campaign that he's working on. And I believe he's gonna just be coming out with some more campaign content even after that. You can see here, you have the digital campaign booklets. So you've got a brief description of how the campaign works and then the Witch King, which is the Valley of Death campaign. And then the Child of Light is the new campaign and the Old God is going to be another campaign coming later. So if I went to the Witch King campaign here, then I could do the prologue. So it's a new sort of story that wasn't in the original uh, booklet that starts you off. 
and then you go into the valley and you've got chapter one and so part one there's no prerequisite so you start with this story place your character peace in the valley haven map so then you go down and then the new objective now is to resolve an attack or event node so you go okay then you start running around after you've resolved an attack or event node when you get to the story resolution phase after movement you then check part two and go through it and now you got to go to the lone titan if you've played the old campaign you kind of know the drill and then you know so you can use the app in order to play through the old campaign i believe steven is close to getting a pdf version up uh, i think he's already given it to greenbrier games or something but um so that'll be up there so you can use a, a physical copy if you don't like to use apps but if you don't mind apps this is just awesome actually so but uh basically only using the app um, i'm only using the app for the story for valley of death to replay it with the new system but like i said you can also use the app to resolve tall tales you can look at the area setups in here instead of the area booklet so here you have valley of death it shows how to set it up just like in the book and some i believe these are just explanations of how these things work and everything so so the app is pretty awesome steven's doing this all himself he's amazing you guys if you if you like this game man steven is awesome he, it's all his own art it's all his own design uh and he is online on facebook on board game geek he's always quick to respond and help so you also have some geysers some sort of uh rules and stuff and so that's basically the app so that should pretty much cover everything you need to know um for the expansion if you have watched my other videos and of course the new the new rule booklet is pretty good uh other than the mistakes obviously but you can read through that if you're brand new um but make sure you check the errata page and if you want print out the most recent version uh in pdf if it, but uh you know that's a lot of it's a lot of pages so um or if you want to just read it through pdf you can do that Oh, the dispositions, I forgot to explain that. So the dispositions are interesting. So these actually give you some advantages when you're fighting. So these two that came up, cocky and jealous. So if I uh, encountered the soul hunter with this disposition, it would be the undead soul hunter who's feeling cocky and jealous. So with cocky, um, if I were able to force the creature to discard a total of two cards per player, um, then I'm going to do three damage to him. But if I was able to force three per player, I can resolve the next disposition immediately without fulfilling its requirements. So that is amazing. Um, I think I was able to do the double once, um, but even if you can't do that, it's always awesome. It just it just gives you some nice... It, it, you do something to it already, and then this fires, and it does more to it. So th these were really good. And as soon as you fulfill one, you just discard it and, and bring out a new one. So there's two every time you encounter a creature. Almost every time. I think there's a couple instances where uh, you may not, but uh, the the story will say whether you don't, if you don't use them. So the last thing I wanted to show you was the other Grimslingers um, that have their special abilities. So Cute Kipper has this Cat's Bane sword that he, you know, you're already familiar with. If you had the game before, he had this big sword, but now you can actually do stuff with the sword. So you're going to have the Cat's Bane with uh, stirability and it starts at 10 and so as you go through a fight um, you're going to be using skills that spend that durability and so uh, you're, you have the maximum of 10 per, per fight and so but you can use some of his abilities to stack and um, and have some really awesome effects within them and but if you ever take three or more damage in his turn you flip this card over and cute kipper goes into his mana form so now your skill cards have extra envy and they only cost a durability. So you're super souped up in your uh, mana form. So it's pretty awesome. I'm just gonna give you a really quick overview of these. So uh, now Luella and the Gaia Mind, there's actually a Gaia Mind that takes effect now. So she starts in control, but as things happen, she goes conflicted and then she gets overtaken. And when she's overtaken, she's kind of powerful, but chaotic. Uh, so. She's got all these crazy uh, skills that she can use. Now, uh, Le Fleur, Noir, and the Professor, she is a vampire. So she's going to be doing things that can gain her blood, and which, you know, makes her stronger. 
So she's got these passive abilities that require blood to be used. And so, for instance, for this one, her blood rage. For every three blood she deducts, gain a plus one envy to any card you play this turn that does damage, and also gain negative one damage from all incoming sources this turn. So she's built up all this blood power, and then she unreaches it in a un, unreaches, unleashes it in a blood rage. Um, so that's her passive abilities, and then her regular skills, which do things like um, this one just gets her three blood and plus one envy. So this is actually like the professor actually allows her to feed on him to power her up. So, um, and, and there's just so many awesome things in here. So them plus Nyanyo are the four Grimslingers from the core box that now have special abilities. Uh, and there were, with the Kickstarter, you got also Henrietta and Red. So these were stretch goals. There were new characters. So. Um, but you can also buy these now if you didn't have the Kickstarter. I think it's only 15 bucks, and I think it's definitely worth it. It's just more awesomeness of this game. So Red has this certain resource called Prowess, and so you spend the Prowess to do other things. So he's got some passive abilities here and all of his skills. And now Henrietta, the, the witchcraft slinging uh, chicken, uh, has this Arcana, can turn into this crow. I think that goes with her. Um, abilities and then the witchcraft skills. Now the cool thing is is that you can also use the witchcraft abilities with any of the old Grimslinger's portraits to allow them to be played in the new campaign. But those are all these specific Grimslingers that have now new resources and skills. That should basically cover what you need to know on top of my previous videos to get you going in the Northern Territory. So let me just show you some of the other new creatures there are if you haven't seen them already. So this is the angsty goblins. This is the bebopnid spider. See, he's got the little buffant hairstyle going on there. We got the uh, magic mushroom. This dude's kind of insane. A couple of his his abilities are gnarly. Um, the soul hunter you got to see, and I mean, this is just where the art is at. I mean, it's like Boba Fett with like the Stranger Things or something like that. It's weird wooden, it just looks amazing. We got the little wisp. I, this guy just reminds me of Plankton from SpongeBob, but um, it's pretty cool. And then the Nude Tar, which is a hilarious uh, creature. Like, um, what is it? Oh yeah. It started to make a face. When we knew signaled one, our impending doom, we will never discuss the things we had to survive this day. So, so you're trying to block the brown fog, obviously, um, the nude tar passed gas at you. So that, uh, that should be it. Um, we got, there was, there's new events, um, with the expansion that are added to the event deck. There were some new creature modifiers as well. And if I forgot anything, I don't think it's anything too important. So, but hopefully this helps you jump into the Northern Territory expansion, understand the differences, uh, but you will still need to make sure that you know, you've know you looked at the rules, you understand the errata, and as you play through there may be questions. I've had to clarify a bunch of stuff, but uh, once I got all that clarified, the game just plays so well. It's so much fun. I love this world. I love this new system. Uh, it's a fantastic game. So. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. I hope you liked this video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Share it with your family friends. And until next time, game on. End of line.